My name's Hannah Thompson, so I am a front-end developer for a company called punters.com.au. I work in this city, so tonight I'm here to take you back to basics and go a little bit deeper into the Z-Index. So Z-Index is a pretty common property for front-end developers to be working with. How many of you guys are familiar with Z-Index? So, in terms of working with Z-Index, how many people have <laughs> done the classic 9,999 and you're still confused because your Z-Index is not working? I mean, it should work, right? This is pretty much the largest number we can set it as. But unfortunately, Z-Index isn't really that simple. So basically what the Z-Index does is it sets the property of the stacking order. So any element with the highest stacking order will be on top and lower stacking will follow through that. So in terms of the stacking order, we have three axes to work with. We've got our Z axis, our Y, and our X. So Z is obviously what the Z index is changing. You're moving elements within that space. We start with a default stacking context, which this is where the tricky bit comes in with the Z index. So we have our default stacking context. We've got our backgrounds and our borders. That's the like base of what every element starts with. And then we can actually also set a negative Z index. So that would be the next in the stacking context. And then from there we have our in, like inflow, we have our block elements, our floated elements, inline, positioned elements. These don't have a Z index, but they do actually come to the top of the stacking order. So if you've got a div and you set a position on it, it's going to go from being at that block level element to coming up in front into one of your positioned elements. And then finally, we have a positive Z index. So in order for Z index to work, we need to set the property explicitly. So natively, it'll be set as static. And for it to work, that first slide I showed you, the only reason that wouldn't have worked is because I had no properties, sorry, no position property set on it. So it needs to be absolute, fixed, or relative. Relative, I personally find the best working with Z index because it's not actually going to move your element out of the flow and you can sort of just bring it to the top without having to pixel perfect position it. It's going to flow nicely. So one of the other things that becomes a little bit tricky with Z index is other properties which affect the stacking context. So a few years ago, maybe a few years ago, you sort of only really had opacity which changes the stacking context, but now with newer CSS3 techniques, We've got a few more, so there's transforms, there's filters, there's CSS regions, among others. So going back to opacity, say I had a modal that I needed to display, and obviously we always want our modals to be on top. If I've got a wrapper around the modal as my overlay and I change the opacity on that, it's actually going to mess with my Z index because what the opacity is doing is it's now coming up to the front of that stacking order which is generally where a lot of the problems come in. So you just need to be mindful of other properties when you are sitting, just like pay attention to what your siblings and what your parents are doing if it's not working for you. One other thing is to be consistent with your Z-index values. So a lot of the time we all just sort of jump to 9,999 and you're already at the highest. What happens if you need something to be higher than that? Or another common thing is to just do it in increments of one, and then if you need something to kind of slip in between, you don't really have a way to manage that. So my suggestion would be to work with a Z-index scale. So at Punters, we actually, we use a preprocessor, which is pretty common these days, but also even if you're not using a preprocessor, CSS now has native variables. So you can set these. So I've done it in increments of 10. And in terms of naming, so you could call it whatever you want. Like you could have it Z index header or Z index footer or 
anything. <laughs> I'm really terrible at naming, so I'm happy to stick with numbers for my z-index scale. One of the other benefits of having this scale is onboarding. So when we bring on new team members to punters and say a new front-end developer has been given a design and their design needs to sit on top of anything and they don't actually have control over where the DOM's going to go in the body. So they're just stuck with what they're given but they're there and they need to style it. If they can come in and find this Z-index scale, they can see exactly what the stacking order's doing and they can explicitly set it and have it on top without the headaches. So we've got some really cool new techniques with CSS. So we've got 3D transforms, <coughs> and we've got Flexbox has this new order property which you can reorder your DOM without having to move things, which is really exciting. But my personal opinion is that for at least a little while longer we are still going to be using Z-index. So I would advise you take some time and sort of understand that stacking context because even within that stacking context, your newer properties that come in are going to be coming in and changing that also. On that note, I'll leave you guys with some further reading. <laughs>